Hello, Seb. Thank you so much for your time for the interview. I'm Rosesa. Nice to meet you, Seb. And also, I would like to ask a few questions regarding your journey as well as OG related and for the international and beyond. First of all, I just received an information from OG social media that DM will be an inactive player and then mind control will be substitute for OG for this tournament. Is there any reason behind this decision, Seb? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there are reasons behind it. Um... We had a really good run with DM overall. We're happy with a lot of things, but we decided that it was time to part ways and that, you know, uh, that so that he could explore other options and that we would too as a team. I think in terms of play, play style and what we're trying to build, uh, maybe the maybe we reach kind of the limits of what we could achieve uh, with DM being on the team. And that doesn't mean that he was not good enough. Uh, it just means that sometimes when you're trying to build a certain way to play, players are you know, more or less better fits. Um, so now we got the opportunity to play with MC, uh, Mind Control from Nigma. Um, he's on a loan for this one event. We're super excited. Uh, the boys have played with them in Berlin Major, where he stood in, and the team went pretty far in the tournament, had a really good run, even though the team had to play with two stand-ins. And as for me, I have competed against him for the longest time now, obviously, during his time is liquid in Liquid and when I was in the OG that won two TIs, and it's an honor to play with him for once. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm I also very excited to see main control uh, on your team right now. And also, I speaking of the qualifiers that you had, uh, but unfortunately, uh, OG are not qualified to TI this year. OG decided to bring in Kitrat and loan Taiga to Wildcard Gaming. Is there any reason why Taiga loaned to NA side while Kitrap joined the team? I mean, that was just an opportunity that Taiga wished to pursue. So there's not like a reason for why he's, he was loaned to an NA team besides his own personal wishes. Uh, and as for the change, yeah, I mean, it's the same. Like, last season has been very rough for OG, probably the roughest season ever. There was a lot of things that happened that prevented the team from structuring and building itself properly uh, visa issues taiga had like mental mindset problems throughout the year and amongst other things that also happened internally that i can't really share but the team had like to go through a lot of challenges i think and i think that year really exhausted everyone so we, we we're just trying to rebuild things from scratch because OG Dota for last season is not where it deserves to be. OG Dota is going to come back to the highest tier and to dominate or be around the teams that dominate, you know, internationally. That That is the goal and that is where we're heading and that is where we will, you know, arrive. So there's a lot of building to do and that process has started a few months ago and it's going to keep going until we get there. I see. So based on the result, the last time you won a tournament was in Malaysia, if I remember correctly, it was ESL1 Malaysia and since then the up and down happened on OG. So that's why I, I see the roster change from OG uh, happen a few times. This also yep. includes uh, your journey with OG. You were decided to step down from competitive scene and you were also decided to form a team uh, from open qualifier with OG. Are you still having competitive desire to play Dota 2 competitively so that's why you built a division 2 teams yeah I, I I still have that actually I still have that and I think uh, seeing OG like the main OG team struggle is the biggest source of motivation for me in a way because uh, regardless of how I feel myself I need OG to be at the highest level of Dota like I believe that's where OG belongs uh, that's where OG always has been so when this doesn't happen I feel a lot of fire and a lot of motivation to help make it happen in any shape or form it could be by coaching it could be by playing it could be by making sure the water bottles supplies are done correctly and whatever you know like anything i'm ready to do anything in order to achieve that so in that sense yes i think my competitive desire has been built back up and OG was like a wave to, you know, slowly getting used to the groove again. Yeah. And yeah, that, that was OG for me and, and, and it kind of did that. I'm also very happy that Topias and no one are going to be at TI. Yeah. That, that's really cool. So I think this OG project kind of helped everybody stay in shape, um, you know, stay close to Dota. So that's nice. Okay. You also mentioned that no one and Topson will be on TI. Topson will be the only player, if I remember correctly, who will have a chance to win three TIs. Uh, what do you think about yeah. uh, Topson actually from your POV? I mean, I think he's like a like a great great player still. Like that didn't change. I think 
Thompson is the kind of player that he's going to do things you cannot expect. He's going to overperform at times. Like, you know, like, because I think everybody got so good at Dota now that you kind of sometimes know what to expect from players. It's like, oh, this guy is supposed to win his lane, then he will, things like that. But Thompson, I think you never know what's going to happen. Like, he could always bring something you're not ready for. And his opposition is not ready for. Uh, and I think his uh, weakness, in a way, right, like ha throughout the year, has been the lack of s macro game stability. But I think that's also because he hasn't been in a top team for a while. So when you're not in top teams, you can't really guess the top team's meta. And I think that now he, now that he gets the chance to play with Tundra, I'm sure that his understanding of, you know, the top, the tier one meta is going to be perfect. And then you can put his skill to use. So I'm very excited to to see him compete uh, at TI. I think, you know, we could get Prime Thompson back again. And uh, and that would be amazing. And and maybe he gets the chance to win a third TI, which is unreal. When everybody else is competing for the second one, he's competing for the third one. So that is crazy. Yeah, that is unreal also from Thompson as well as you who won two TIs back to back. And also, you also mentioned about the tier one meta. What do you think about a current patch and is it good for you and your team to compete at this level of patch or is there anything that you want to change a little bit for this patch? I actually like this uh, the state of the patch a lot right now. I did not I mean overall I like the the patch, don't get me wrong, like the big patch that we had now a long time ago with you know whatever like lotuses, the gates, this patch. I I liked it from the beginning and I still like it a lot. I think it lacked balance when it came out. Uh, I think when it came out, it was like the aura time where everybody would pipe, like buy pipe greaves every game and yeah. <laughs> group up. I, I think now it's much more diverse. Like you see a lot of different ways to play from different teams. I think a lot of heroes are being picked more than ever. I would say it feels like obviously you have the top heroes, you know, like, yeah, of course, like Gyro is very strong and Nature's Prophet and whatnot, but this will always be the case in Dota. At some point, some heroes are always going to be strong and, and people are going to pick them. But the overall macro, I think, is very good. I like Dota when you can pick anything. That, that's when I like Dota. Like, uh, I, I don't like Dota when there is like a very narrow way to play. You only pick the same heroes and go for the same items. This is when it gets really boring for me because I think Dota is such a beautiful game and you have like so many cards that you can use. Then the game is really nice when all the cars are usable, and I feel like we're close to that. So in that sense, I think it's a great patch. I see. We almost conclude the interview. I have two more questions, if you don't mind, Sap. So of not. the first one will be Dream League Season 21 might be the last tournament of the year for OG. What's next for 2024? Bringing OG back to the absolute highest level of Dota. The work is not done until basically... It, it, it's not normal for OG to not get to the best of five grand finals, you know? Yeah. And until OG is regularly and 100% there for, you know, most tournaments, then the road is ongoing. So basically 2024, the aim is that. So we'll do everything we can, everything we know to get there and we will get there. I see. One last question. This is related to Dota in general. We know that the TI-12 uh, format is changing. What do we think about the TI-12 and 2024 format? Uh, I mean, I'm thinking on the spot now because I haven't thought about it. But what I can already safely tell you is that... So usually what's really determ determine, like what determines a lot during TI group stage is the fact that you have two groups yeah. of you know, a lot of teams. So basically what happens is that the meta starts shaping up from the group stage. This is when teams meet a lot of different teams yeah. and they learn from all of them. And since you have two groups, usually the meta from the two groups are a bit different. But what I mean is like, since you play versus seven or eight different teams, you get to see a lot and everybody plays everybody. So after two or three days, everybody starts deciding and agreeing on what the strong heroes are, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, if you have four groups, what's going to happen is that probably some teams are going to do really smart things and it's going to go unnoticed because during TI group stage, you play so much that you don't have time to study the teams you don't play, if that makes sense. You only, because you need to keep preparing for the teams you have to play and, and, and you don't have time really to look around and get a feel for 
you know, what everybody else is doing. So I think one consequence of that is that it's going to take longer for the meta to cement after group stages. So we might have a very hectic beginning of playoffs this year, I think, where maybe with more upsets, because it's going to take longer for teams to adapt to each other's since you have four groups instead of only two. That would be my guess. So I'm not sure I like it, but I usually don't like change. I, I, I'm a nostalgic kind of person when it comes yeah. to Dota, so it doesn't mean anything that I don't like it. It could be much better. It's just me, so don't notice me. It doesn't matter what I like or dislike. I see. It is a pleasure to talk with you, Seb. Thank you so much. Uh, kindly send my regards to OG squad and be happy we'll as, do as so. always. Thank you so much, Seb. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank uh, you, take Seb. care and yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.